bugging, heartless and mean Mugging at 16 on the scene, watching beans Bugging, kicking up dust with the old cheese Soaking up the game that was told to me And what's up, family? I knew that this attorney was going to fight for me because her modus operandi, her M.O. was about the injustices that had come upon, that had come upon the juveniles that were tried as adults. She worked for the Human Rights Watch with Susan Calvin, another great woman. And I remember being in Pelican Bay State Prison, shoot. I remember going before the DRB, which was the, the Department uh, Review Board. It was the highest committee inside on the Pelican Bay shoe. And this was the only that this was the only committee that could release you from your um time in Pelican Bay shoe. Remember, we were serving indeterminate shoe terms. After the hunger strikes, they started to go back to the 80s of releasing the people that they had validated inside the Pelican Bay Shoe. So like I said, some of these dudes had done 20, 30 years inside um, the shoe that were slammed. And not just the Pelican Bay Shoe, Corker Shoe, Tehachapi Shoe. And then they had opened up um, a part of New Folsom that was a shoe as well. And so they were reviewing people from the 80s. But because I was up for my six years uh, inactive, in, inactive, active status, I was going before the review board for them to see what I had been doing within the last six years. But before they had taken pleas, that week, these people came from uh, the Human Rights Watch, Susan Calvin, my attorney, Heidi Romo. And um, other people that represented um, the collective that were focused on um, trying to do everything they could to help the juveniles who were tried as adults be released from the prison system. These were people that were focused on the Senate Bill 260, 261, and other bills that they have done to um, enter into the legislative system to give people meaningful opportunity to be released and live the lives that they could have lived out here on these streets. I remember family, I met Scott Budnick. He's the, Scott Budnick was a, a movie producer that did the Hangover movies. One, two, um, old school, whatever, right? I also met a, a couple other people that had worked with the, the Catholic Church who were focused on recidivism, who were focused on restorative justice. They wanted to restore the person in his wholeness back to serving the community, much like Jesus wanted to restore Zacchaeus from when he was on that sycamore tree to come down from that sycamore tree and start producing fruit in the community that he was just taking from. Family. That was what that was the meaning of love for me. These people were going on to their way to make something happen. Because I met this attorney at that very time. Her name is Heidi Romo. Very good woman. Strong woman. Woman that was going to go out of her way. To do everything she could to fight for you. So because of that, I hired her. And this was maybe about four years, um, four years from the time that I met her to the time that she was representing me on my release. And think about this family. When I say I hired her, what money did I have? What did I have to show to produce fruit, to have something of my own, to go and say, you know what, Jake said, I'm gonna hire you if you could do this. No, it came from my stepfather. A man who believed in me, right? But I'm sure he was filled with his own doubts. A man who was Jesus for me. And because he believed in what mother was saying, despite knowing all the stuff that I had been doing, he came out of, he came out of pocket to go ahead and out.
show his love and support for a person that he didn't even know. Much like Jesus came to help Zacchaeus restore his person to the community. I get very emotional about it because it's like, who does that? Who shows unconditional love in that way? Each of us are capable of doing that, but are we doing that? Are we showing people love? It's Christmas. It's a time of gift giving. It's a time of understanding how God came in the flesh as a baby. Different denominations see all kinds of different things. Oh, he was born on this day. I ain't tripping none of that. It's a whole bunch of nonsense to me. I don't care. The point is a celebration. The point is being loved and giving love towards the next person when you're giving gifts. Jesus himself said, some of you are, he says, you guys are evil and yet you give gifts to each other. Nobody's going to put snakes or stones in a box and give it to the next person where they're going to open up snakes and stones. And he says, and you guys are evil. You guys show love to one another. Like, come on, like, like, and that's the reality. We don't do that. Let us come to the point in our lives where we can truly show love, family. We're capable of doing it. You're loved, you're valued, you're treasured, and you're so worthy. Come on, let's get there. From the time when I received all these 1030s, 1030s were saying the things that I was um, I was doing inside the system. They came from people that were um, going through a process of debriefing, snitching, whatever the case, right? They were seeing all the things that I was doing and they were putting it on paperwork. And I received that paperwork when I went to the board. And so when I received it, I was like, man, I know I'm not going to go home. And it destroyed me. Damn, that shit killed me. Like I said, I just got caught with a phone. And um, when the day that I went to board, I was like a pale ghost. And I remember telling everybody, I can't go home. I'm going to get a three-year denial, five-year denial, whatever the case but I believed in God. Oh my gosh, did I believe in God. I had been saved, family. I knew his power. And I remember praying. I remember being in the holding tank before I went to board. And I remember praying to God in the name of Jesus. Remember, there's a pecking order. There's the Father God who reveals the Son, Jesus, who died for our sins, who came in the flesh and seals us with the Spirit. Because the Father calls, the Son reveals, and the Spirit seals. I remember yelling at Him. I even remember cussing and saying, Amen, show up. You've given me these visions. You've done all this. Show up. I want to go home. You know what, family? I wasn't feeling anything. I was angry. I was cursing. And I said, show up. And I remember this power came over. Oh! And it came with this complete grief. And I remember saying, ah, ah. And I remember screaming and just these tears flowing because it was, it was a flood of emotions. And I said, all right, all right, you're here. You're here. This is different. I had felt God's power in different ways. But this was completely different. I said, all right, you're here. And as soon as I did that, family, I heard the steps of the CEO that was going to escort me to the boardroom. 
He says, hey, man, they're here. And he looked at me. And he see that I was just flooded with tears. He says, you okay? You need a minute? I said, I'm okay. Let's roll. I remember walking into the boardroom. And at this time, because of COVID, everything was on screen. I remember before my attorney, the commissioner and the deputy commissioner, and the district attorney that they were, um, that they had on board who was going to do everything she could to deny me my parole. And I was just crying. And the commissioner said, he was like, um, do you need some time? We haven't even started the hearing yet. Do you need some time? And I was like, nah. I said, nah, today is a reckoning. Today is a time where I am able to show you the filthy man that I was. Today is a time where I have no more secrets. And the tears began to flow. He says, all right, who was the name of the man that you murdered? Couldn't see the bottle stay. But I said it. I said, uh, why is it so hard for you to see his name? And I said, because I loved him. Anyhow. He stopped the hearing. He says, let us, we're gonna stop. They stopped it, the screen went blank. My attorneys, everybody was crying. I'm sorry about that, man. He, um, it's really emotional um, experience of mine because I was able to experience the love of God. You know, before the hearing took place, the commissioners, deputy commissioners, and my attorney, including the DA, were able to be on a screen amongst themselves. And um, the commissioner looked towards my attorney and said, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, this guy ain't going to get released. Remember, they review all your stuff before you go in there. And my attorney, she's there to advocate for me. She says, oh, no, this guy's going to get released. She's like, he's like, no, no, he's not going to get released. We're going to deny him, just so you know. He's got all this crazy stuff that he did in the system. And even if we wanted to release him, the governor's going to go ahead and strip him of that release. Because I was a murderer. So because of that, even if the board had said I was I was suitable for parole, the governor had the ultimate decision because, like I said, I had committed a crime that needed to go before his office. And he said, because I'm going to go before his office, I was going to get denied. He doesn't release people like this. So this was already established. This was already acknowledged inside the boardroom. My my advocate said, no, nah, you're wrong. He's going to be released. And she had this somber face the moment that I went in there because she was already filled with the knowledge of what these people were going to do. But when they stopped that hearing, they stopped it for a reason. Because they seen my remorse. They seen that there was an eternal change in the person that I was. They went back on screens, amen. 
your emotion was so beautiful. He says, and for the record, I want to, I want you to repeat what you said of why you're here. And I talked about the reckoning, that this was a reckoning to speak about the person that I was and all the things that I had done when I was in the prison system. He wanted to put it on record. Family, I spent about four hours talking about all the things that I was doing because it was already on paper. There was nothing that I couldn't, there was nothing that, that I could hide from them because they all knew what I was doing because it had already been thrown on paper. There ain't no secrets inside the prison system. Somebody's telling on you one way or another. So when they talk about exposing this and exposing that, what are we exposing? They know everything, right? I ain't naming names and I ain't talking about different organizations because you know what, stop scared. That's not who I am. But the Placas know everything. Come on, man. They had a file on me this big from the time that I was a kid, from when I was on the streets to juvenile hall and even to the prison system. Come on now. We go around talking about our monikers and where we're from. They can't even deny. I can't even deny where I'm from because I got a tattooed on my stomach. I mean, come on. I mean, there ain't no secrets. And so because of that, I told them who I was to show them who I am today. And they stopped the hearing three different times. There was a time when he stopped the hearing and the commissioner got up and he said, Jesus, what is this? Because he was being stirred, family. And I, I say to you like this, family, Jesus told that man, that's my son. That's my son and that's the man that you're going to release. I remember there being an intermission and my attorney says, how do you think it's going? I think it's going good, but by this time I was already trained, family. And she said, they love you, Robert. They love you. They love you. And I said, yeah, that's how it feels. And she says, I want to tell you something. And I said, all right. And she's like, no, 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 I, I don't want to discourage you. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to break you. And I was like, all right, whatever. So I started talking about the hearing. And she says, Robert, they're going to deny you. They're going to deny you. They've already told me. And the spill that I had just given you guys, this is what she told me. And when she told me this, I said, you just confirmed my release. Because family, I had already prayed and I had already went before the church inside the prison system. Remember, at this time, I'm already a changed man. And I remember telling these prisoners and saying, check this out. I can't receive my release. But when they say no, God is going to intervene. And he's going to turn their no into a yes. On faith, on power, on everything I know about God Almighty. I said he's going to turn that no into a yes. And I told them, I'm telling you beforehand so that when it takes place, you can understand that God is moving through me. So when she told me that, I said, you just confirmed my release. Now I know I'm going home. We went back into that boardroom family. And they said, we want you to know, Mr. Rivera, that we find you suitable for parole. Family, the tears just overflowed me. And the, remember, this was my first hearing, my first board date. Nobody gets released on their first hearing. And he says, yes, let them out. Let the tears out. These are good tears. Family. I remember exiting that room and walking back as a ghost, drained with all these emotions. 
and going back to the yard in the yard all knew that I was going to my board day because that's what they do. Everybody knows each other's business. And everybody wanted to know what had happened. And I, when I was able to tell him that I got granted for parole, everybody was in disbelief. Everybody, family, because they counted me out. My attorneys counted me out. The commissioners counted me out. Everybody in the institution counted me out. But God never did. That's the message, family. That is the message of love and gift giving this season. God does not count you out when everybody else has. You are worthy. You are loved. You are cherished. And you are filled with the grace that poured his hands out on that cross and said, I'm going to die for you. We have to continue this on another content, family. There's so much that I want to explain to you guys. Hit the likes. Let's hit that 1,500 likes. Let's hit them comments. Hit me up. I'm so transparent. I'm not going to bullshit you and take you down this path. That is bullshit. I'm straightforward. I'm emotional, but at the same time, there was a sickness inside of me that I have no part of. I ain't going to lie to you, family. Let's hit the algorithm. Let's take this content to where it needs to go. We're here to save lives. Straight up, family. God released me for a reason. This is that reason to be so transparent and honest before you so that you can see God is mighty and he will do everything he can to build your life towards the greatness of who you are because he wants you a part of his kingdom. He wants to be with you in heaven. Come on, family, let's get there. I'm out.